Hey there, are you a low code maker working with the Microsoft Power Platform? And have you heard about all the things that have been going on with ChatGPT? It may have actually made your work and your life a bit easier already. Well, what we're gonna do in this video is we will build ourselves a very small power app that uses the OpenAI connector to allow us to actually interact with it and ask it questions and receive the responses within our app. This is a step-by-step -step guide. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we will build the connector. And then once we've got our connector, we'll build the Power App. And it should be quite cool actually once we're finished. But before we start, let's roll the intro. So there are some prerequisites to being able to get started with this. The first one of those is you need your own OpenAI account. If you've been working with ChatGPT already, you've got one of those. Um, secondly, you'll need a Power Platform environment so you can actually make your Power App. You'll need the licensing so that you can actually make use of this connector because it's a premium connector that you'll actually be making use of. Finally, once we have our OpenAI account, we'll need to go and get ourselves a key. And just bear in mind that we will need to prefix it with the word bearer when the time comes. And I will see that later on. So let's get started. So I'm in my version of the my account within the Power Platform. And you can see that it's HTTPS and it's platform.openai.com. I need to head to personal and I need to go and view my API keys. Now what you can see is that some of these keys have been used and some of them haven't. Now you can, within the context of what we're looking at here, you can actually create five keys and we're gonna create one right now so that we can use it later on. Now, it is actually the only time that you actually see the full key. Obviously, for the purposes of this, I will be deleting the uh, secret key later on. But all I need to do is I need to select secret new secret key. It's gonna create a key for me, and I'm gonna copy that out and then pop it somewhere safe. Then I'm gonna go to office.com, go to Power Apps, pop there, and jump across to Power Apps. This is the bit where the license inside of things starts to come in. Once I'm in here, I'll then go to the experiments, and I would then go and look at my personal environment, because I know that I actually not, haven't created anything in this environment yet. I'm gonna create a solution. Go to new solution, and I'll say it's open, AI demo. Select a publisher. And I'm gonna use this demo publisher and select create. So this is gonna be the container for our apps and even our connectors. Now to get us moving on this, we'll need to come out of the solution. We've got our little container there and we will now need to look at the connections and we're gonna create this connection. So that's the thing that we need our our, um, our key for later on. So we're gonna pop on new connection, and this happens to be the correct one, this open AI. So if I type in open AI, then you'll see that we've got this independent publisher. Now this one was created by Robin Rosengren, and it's the simplest way of you getting started with this. So we'll select the, the create option there, and then Type in bearer, space, and then we'll add in our API key. Accept and create. And that connection has now been created for us. So now that that connection exists, uh, we can start using it in our apps. To do that, I need to go back to solutions then into my OpenAI demo. Then I'm gonna select new and over to more and we're gonna do a connection reference. Then I'll say OpenAI, I'll add in CR at the start. And we'll need to use, select a connector. And if we do a search on this, OpenAI, we'll find our connector and then if we select refresh here, 
will find the one that we have just created. Now, if it didn't exist, we'd be selecting new connection at this point in time. So we'll select create here. Now, the reason for the connection reference is so that we can actually move it between environments more successfully. So let's start building ourselves a Canvas app. We'll go to new app, Canvas app. It's going to offer us whether or not it wants to be a tablet or a phone. We'll just go for a tablet to give us a bit more space. And we'll do this as open AI chat GPT. Then we'll select create. We'll do a few things to just make it a little bit nicer for us. So we'll choose this, uh, this pink theme here. Then what we're going to do is we will we'll add in a we'll add in a text input and we'll give it some default text so we'll say why is the sky blue question mark so there's our default text and now we need to get a response from that so what we'll do is we'll pop a little button on there so insert button and then move across here. Now at this point in time, we have actually connected this to the connection that we actually created. So we'll need to introduce that into our app. And we'll move over to the data area. Then select add data, search for OpenAI, and then select our connection there. And there's our connection that we created. So let's change the text on the button. So we'll do ask open AI chat GPT. And we can resize it. So we can see the onselect property of this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say set GBL open AI response to be open AI and we'll select this and then dot because we need to tell it the action that we're trying to do and it's the completion action then we're going to need to tell it some some variables that need to go in here now we can see there are actually some options that we have available to us and what we're going to use here is we're we are going to use the text da vinci 003 model once we've done that we need to tell it the prompt so if i actually go on to the why is the site sky blue and we'll change it from text input one to be txt prompt Then I'll go back on to the button and then I'll say txt prompt dot text. Then what we can do is we can add in some additional properties. So we'll pop in best of. We'll actually follow the fully guidance here and we'll use n, we'll make that one. We'll make the best of. Make that one. And then we'll do the frequency penalty, put that at zero. And then max tokens. This is actually interesting because the more tokens, the bigger response. I'll just say 500 for the moment. And then we'll just do the presence penalty. Make that zero and just keep going through those. Uh, temperature, I'm gonna skip over to stop. Do temperature is 0 0.4. And we'll leave the user. So I'm now gonna put the curly brackets on there. Let's make this a bit easier to read. Cut the curly, bra curly brackets on there and close the brackets and then close the brackets once more. So that, in theory, will allow us to ask the question of ChatGPT. So let's see if this actually works. Why is the sky blue? Ask OpenAI ChatGPT, and we'll see that going through. 
Now, we're not actually gonna see the response to this because all we've done is put it into a global variable. So let's go and have a look at our global variable. On to the three dots there, on to variables, and we can see that there's a response that we've been provided with. We can jump into the record itself, and we can actually go onto the choices. It's quite an unusual way in which we actually get into this. And because of that, we're actually gonna to need to dive right into this in order to get be able to get the response out. So let's just take another look at that. So we actually had to go, well, let's go on to global variables. We've got a table, then we go into a record, and then within the record you have choices, and then within the choices you can actually see it's actually only got one uh, item there. So what we're gonna do is we need to dive into that. To do that, it's actually a lot simpler than it might, th might look. So we'll just go to insert on there and we can put a text label in there. Move that across, make it a bit bigger. Uh, put the overflow as scroll. And then what we'll do is we'll make the text that's in the here, GBL, OpenAI response, uh, dot choices. Now this isn't gonna work. But actually, all we need to do is we need to add in first, so we just get one, one of these, and then put a dot at the end and add in text. So first, GBL open AI response, uh, dot choices, close the brackets, dot text. So let's uh, make this a bit bigger for us. Change the font size, make that 20. And we've actually got our response. Why is the sky blue? And we've asked OpenAI chat GPT and it's come back with this response. Now we can actually extend it a little bit further because we could start to change the variables that are used when we actually ask that question. And the, the one that's really the key one to change is this max tokens here because that defines the size of response. Now it does depend on the question you ask as to how big the response is. But the fun one is to just go into here. We'll just pop a another text input there. And then we'll just do text input. And we'll do something around max tokens. So I'll call it this TXT tokens. And this is gonna be, we'll start off with a default of 500. And on this ask OpenAI chat GPT, when we at look at the max tokens, what we can do is we can actually look at the, the text TXT tokens dot text. Now in theory, this has to be a number. Um, and what we can do is we can go onto the, onto the text tokens input. And what we can do is change that so it has to be a number. Uh, I think the other one, the other thing we can do on here is we could say the max tokens is equal to the value. Um, oops would have to be value and that'll be text tokens dot text and that would convert anything into uh, into a value there now what that means is that when we ask the question this time around in theory we could get a bigger response now bear in mind it's max tokens um, so if we went on to here and maybe made this a little bit bigger and we also made this bigger we can play around with the format in here so what we could do is, why is the sky blue? Uh, write an essay. Now, if we give it a tiny response, uh, response size of 50, it's not gonna get very far within this essay. It's gonna provide us with a very small uh, amount of words. Um, but if we give it something like 500 or 5,000 even, it's gonna be a bit longer. So I'm gonna ask it again ask OpenAI ChatGPT, and we'll go and get the longer response this time. And you can see the time that's taken already is a little bit longer. So how long is this response? Well, let's give it a bit of a, let's have a little test of this. So if I go on to insert and do text label, what I can actually do is pop that in there and we can actually do some kind of clever trickery to work out the number of words. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say it's gonna be 
number of words and pop a little space in there and then ampersand split now I then need to go and have a look at what this object is called I'll call it LBL response split LBL response dot text we're going to split it by the the space there and close the brackets now it won't like us and the reason for that is because it's actually produced a table but what we can do with the table is we can do a count rows count rows and then pop another bracket in there and it'll tell us the number of words that we have there and strictly speaking you'd need to do an add uh, you'd need to add one uh, onto that in order to get the correct number so now all that remains is for us to have a little experiment with this because why would we do it without asking a few interesting questions so uh, write me a dax date table now it probably won't do a great job of this, um, but we'll see what it actually comes back with. So it's trying to write a DAX date table. Uh, what about how does the color function in Power Apps work? Let's just ask this. So it's done okay. It could be, be nice to have a few examples. So provide examples. So here we go. And as you can see, this is live. So this is uh, some examples of how to actually use it. It's not amazing if I'm honest. Um, I think that you would actually find some better responses. Um, but for some other things, for example, if you said write a job spec for a power platform developer. Let's see what it comes up with. And let's give it a little bit more space to play with here. Ask OpenAI ChatGPT. And it's now come up with what is a pretty good response here. So we've got responsibilities, we can see requirements and, and so on. Wow, everyone, we did it. I'm kind of surprised that we managed to get so much done in just under 20 minutes. We've now got an app, you know, a working app that allows us to ask questions and get responses using the ChatGPT connector. This is the app working right now. A very simple way of getting information out, asking questions. Now that we've got in Power Apps, we can do so much more with this sort of thing. Um, and I invite you to, to you know, go and create some really cool solutions with this. And please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, and also, if you've got any questions in there, maybe you're struggling with this, drop your questions in down below and, and I'll do my best to get you some great answers. There are more complex ways of approaching this. We could have done a custom connector, but this is the fastest way I can think of, of giving you access to an app that can do ChatGPT. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again next time.